Knowledge is power. And they... Good afternoon, everybody. This is Jennifer Solis from Weekend 702, Nevada's Cannabis News. Uh, today on the agenda, we have uh, local news talking about the numbers and the canopy of the cultivation in the state of Nevada. We are also talking about Henderson and there's some of their zoning restrictions. We also have Christine Kramer running for Assembly District 13? 13. I'll Thir- take 13, your lucky number. 13 is your lucky number. Assembly District 13 in the house. And so we will be interviewing her. So straight off to uh, some of our local news. We have a lot of stuff going on on the 23rd of September. Uh, that's next Tuesday. Of course, we have our radio show next Tuesday. But also, Clark County uh, is having a a meeting about the proposed canopy um, for the local grows. The local grows in the in the state is saying that they need six hundred and fifty thousand square foot of canopy to grow cannabis to one million square feet of canopy to grow cannabis, and that they have received two to three times that number in applications. And so they're asking for everybody's input at five hundred Grant Sawyer Building, at Grant Sawyer. And what time is that? I believe it's from... It's at 9 a.m., I think. 9 a.m. So thank you, Raymond, for, for chiming in on that one. I'm I'm to your right, by the way, and in between you and I is Kurt Decott, and we have David Beach Baker. Oh, you thank you, Raymond. forgot that part. Well, you know, Christine Kramer was was identified. <laughs> That's important. All right, to my right are dear Kurt Ducott. And Raymond Fletcher, Beach Baker is our producer for the show, and Christine Kramer will be joining us. So back to like beating him up for uh, for uh, misrepresenting there, Raymond. What's up? Clark County is asking for people's opinion on this. Well, I, I, I um, is it Clark County or the state? Uh, well, it is the state, but it is a stakeholders meeting, and I think that uh, Chris G and uh, Lawrence Weekly. Are they Christine hosting? and Lawrence Weekly are in the meeting that is being held this Thursday, the, the 18th? 18th at 10 a.m. Okay, so we have a lot of local stuff happening that has to do with uh, the canopy and the amount of grows that are going on in the state of Nevada. Yeah, and we've received a few a few different opinions on this. Some people think that, uh, you know, a million dollar or a million square feet of canopy is 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 enough and uh, other you know and other people are under the belief that you know let let the fair market figure it out you know i i for one believe that the the more supply the lower the cost to the end user is going to be so i'm not i'm not for putting limits on the amount of growth and neither am i currently there's about uh, 6300 medical marijuana card holders in the state of nevada and Senator Tick Bloom estimates the number could jump to about 50,000 after dispensaries open. But let's put aside the number of residents we have here in Nevada. Nevada is also the only state that is going to accept cards from other states. Reciprocity. So if we limit what we have available for the patients here in our own background backyard, what about uh, our visitors? What about the tourists? who want to come to Las Vegas and have a good time, yet at the same time have safe access to their medication. Well, exactly, and that and that's exactly um, one of the points that uh, that I've brought up many times is that we don't we don't have any idea how many people are going to come into our state looking for medical marijuana, and we don't want to shortchange the people that are already here in Nevada having cards. And the other, the other really good point um, is that even though there are 650,000 to a million square feet is what they say they, they want, and they say they receive two to three times that amount of building, you're not going to use 100% of the building for grow. And so your canopy is going to be much shorter than the two to three times that, um, that they're, they're saying that have applied. So two to three times the amount of space is applied, but they're not seeing the actual amount of grow space that's available. These are the sizes of the buildings themselves. 
I remember there was conversation, you know, when, when things first got started up that you could only use one third of your facility for grow and, you know, artificial barriers that, you know, various municipalities put upon the grows, you know, so you're not necessarily going to be using the full facility for your grow is what some of the municipalities said. Not only that, though, look at the amount of product that you're going to need for your concentrate and for all these other products, you know, to make your oils, you know, your, your chapsticks, your lotions. It's not only smokable, you know, so it takes a lot of product to make some of these things that patients who, who just cannot or do not have the ability to smoke for them to take their medication. Well, you know, the RSO in itself takes an immense amount of cannabis to make, even, you know, the the small amount. It takes a pound or two to make a treatment for about about a half a month to to three weeks. And so if you're using about a pound of marijuana um, to make one person's treatment that, that needs cannabis, you know, think about how many other people are going to want to try the RSO um, solution. And that's Rick Simpson oil. For those of you that don't know what RSO is, Rick Simpson oil is a super concentrate that's been shown to kill cancer. It causes apoptosis, which means that it bursts the cancer cell and does not allow it to advance or uh, advance or grow. Well, I certainly wouldn't want someone that wasn't elected by the people to make a decision about this when the people have already voted and passed this law how many years ago and we're still waiting to open the doors on our first dispensary well you know chad westham uh he he's the state division's bureau chief he stressed that that, that there has not been a limit set yet and so oh, what they please. want to do well you know that that's what they've recommended is six hundred and fifty thousand to one million but what they have to do is hold this hearing to justify opening it up to larger numbers they're they're not going to hold this meeting to keep it at a small level this is this is my belief in this and I, I do have some insider kind of information on this they want us to come out and state why we think that these two to three times the number the number of people that you know that have applied for these should get them also um, I'm bringing somebody in out of state to to testify to that because there are still severe shortages in the states that have do you have medical marijuana like Washington Colorado went through a shortage Arizona went through a shortage that's true and so allowing the allowing you know two to three times that facility to go up and then let the free market dictate who is going to survive after that um, is smart but I've also heard some first from some business owners saying that you know they that these huge mega facilities it may take them five or ten dollars to produce a pound that they're going to sell for you know a thousand fifteen hundred dollars and then there are some facilities that are smaller it's going to take a lot more to produce that pound and they fear that these mega facilities are just going to drive them uh, out of business you we know call before it the they walmart syndrome the walmart syndrome exactly um exactly so christine what do you think about this well, uh, I have family up in Washington State, and uh, that they have talked about. It's been a big. The shortage uh, has made it where the medication isn't available to everybody who who needs it. Um, I thought that a Washington State system, where you can actually have certified nursing assistants uh, bring you uh, your medical marijuana to your home, is a great program. Except for that, when there's no medication available, what do you do? Exactly, exactly. Yes. You know, what do you have to ask these people to either grow it themselves or and they they weren't set up like that. Uh, that's the reason that they've that we have um, proposed to extend the personal grows to 2018 is because we have no idea how this program is going to work. And so to allow people to continue to grow their own and to revisit it into 2018 is a smart idea because it's going to leave those people without medication. And, if, you know, if I get my way, I'm going to be allowed to grow forever. You know, I think everyone only... should be allowed to grow forever. Yeah, you should. Yeah. Not everyone will, but everyone should have that opportunity. Well, yeah, and Kurt's raised a, a really great point. Everybody can learn how to grow tomatoes, but not many people do. There's still people that go to the store for tomatoes. 
Um, you know, so there are people that are going to want to continue to grow. And there, there are people that are just because of their circumstances or their brown thumb or whatever else. Um, they may be living in an apartment and, and or HOA is not allowing personal grows. And, and those people should have safe access to their medication. But we shouldn't inhibit those people that have already fought for. Yeah. And when you're going through like a personal uh, medical crisis, I mean, it, your plants need a lot of attention. Uh, when you're going back and forth uh, for chemo and other treatments, we really should have make sure that we have that for our serious patients. That's a great point, Christine. Um, you know, I've, I've read on your bio that you're, uh, you've been an activist for a very, very long time. <laughs> uh, can you describe or tell us some, about some of the activism that you've been involved with? Well, I first uh, was a precinct captain for my political party at 14 years old. Wow. <laughs> that I had it just enjoyed that it was an opportunity. I went to high school at a very low income area in North Portland, uh, Oregon. And the Democratic Party gave me the opportunities where it was the first place I got to learn how to use a computer, learn how to write a business letter. Uh, these ladies called the Gray Panthers would tell you how to like dress in a nice business suit. Um, I've worked on environmental causes. I've worked on a lot of education causes um, that two, my two oldest children have Asperger's syndrome. It's a high, uh, form of high functioning autism. Uh, so I threw myself into working on that. I did a lot of behind the scenes work for political candidates. I didn't want myself to become a political ca candidate. I was always trying to find a candidate that I could be there like behind the scenes and help that person because it's easier to sell someone else than yourself, believe it or not. Uh, but then I had, there was an open seat in my district. Uh, there was no primary in my district. And I'm running against a gentleman who even though Nevada voters approved medical marijuana 15 years ago. He voted against the dispensary law in the 2013 legislature. He said he was doing that because he uh, he actually has not given a good reason on the record why he did that. But this was vo voting against the will of the voters. But then the same year, he goes and he votes against marriage equality, saying that he was doing it because of the will of the voters. So that's rather inconsistent. Well, if he's a Republican in the assembly, uh, the odds are he did it because of the will of the Pfizer. <laughs> <laughs> the will of big business. Yeah, and I have been a supporter of medical marijuana uh, for quite some time. I've had family members uh, use it. I've had friends use it. I'm very committed to the cause of um, parents being able to use this for their children. Nevada has very vague laws. We have families that are moving out of our state to Colorado that I couldn't imagine if one of my four children got cancer having to pick up and separate my family because my state has inconsistent laws. Uh, some of those inconsistencies can be dangerous because um, because it does say that your doctor is going to have to sign off for anybody that's under 18 in Nevada. Um, and then finding a pediatrician that's willing to sign off on somebody on, on medical marijuana is a tough sell for some of them. They may have to shop doctors, may have, may have to shop um, many different doctors. Um, you know, to do that, um, my and my son does have um, my son has Asperger's also, and he's in normal classes now. But being an advocate, um, you know, just you know, you you have to you have to become involved and be an advocate. I, I really salute you for that. Oh yeah, I gave up a corporate job to work a couple of part time jobs and take my kids to ABA therapy and really put nothing but them on the front burner to make sure that they got to where they need to be. And my son's graduating with all normal classes with honors next June. Uh, so I'm proud that I made that choice because he only had that small window of opportunity and I'm glad that I stepped right through it. Uh, I want to talk a little bit about my legislative district. It's the far northwest corner of Las Vegas. Uh, we've got about 65,000 people, uh, a lot of families uh, out there. So far northwest, and we're talking uh, north of what, like uh, Sahara or north of Durango. Durango, wow. Floyd Lamb uh, Park up there. And I have a lot of constituents in this district who are very interested in getting into growing uh, medical marijuana, that we have uh, some rural um, agriculture type lots, and that we need to have some good, clear, consistent rules. Now, now you're, you're talking about being a supporter of families, you know, um, various uh, parents take medication for, you know, 
whatever reason that they're prescribed medications for. Mm -hmm. What if you have a, a parent who happened to be a medical marijuana patient and would you be for them keeping their children or do you think that people that use medical marijuana shouldn't be parents? I don't believe that we should. We have never taken away the right of parents to recreationally drink alcohol that I think that you could take any substance of abuse and take it to such a far extreme uh, that you get to the point where you're neglecting your children. I am absolutely against child neglect, but I do believe that parents uh, responsibly using medical marijuana, it may be better for their family than if they were using alcohol, that parents tend not to um, physically abuse their children on medical marijuana versus the levels of physical abuse that happen to children related to alcohol. Right. We, we, we just see a lot of uh, parents losing uh, custody of their children or fighting for custody simply because they're a medical marijuana patient. And I just want the constituents in your district to understand where you stand on the issue is do medical marijuana patients and parents have the same rights as non-medical marijuana patients? Parents have rights. Children have rights. We need to look at each individual situation and understand that all families have challenges. But I am of the position that we need to look at the actual circumstances that the children are in rather than trying to shame surrounding the substance. And uh, fair enough, uh, we have uh, we have one of our listeners and um, and people that we need to support on Thursday, Thursday at nine a.m. at the family court on on Bonanza and Pecos, and that is in in uh, courtroom T. I don't Department T. Department T. It, it's it's where the judge was recalled. Yeah, for... I'll I'll, uh, I'll post a link to the event on our Facebook page tonight, and it'll also be on our main website. And so that that's uh, Bursell versus Patton court date Thursday nine a.m. Clark County Family Court, and that is in um, Department T. And so if you are available to go down uh, on Thursday to, to sit in, in the court and watch uh, this unfold, please dress, um, pre please dress nicely. Professionally. Professionally. Court, court, court attire, basically. Court attire. Act like it's your children being taken away. Act like it's your mm -hmm. children on the line. And please don't, you know, do shout outs or, or no clap outbursts. or outburst um, that is inappropriate in a courtroom. Um, and, and just uh, be there to be eyes on the judge because a lot of times if a judge has eyes on them, they're going to um, behave more responsibly. I don't know. Ethically, you would hope. You would hope. You, you know, and, and, and it's sad because the judge in, in, in this situation has had uh, her rulings called into question overwhelmingly. You know, and and it's sad that any parent can have their children taken away just for taking medication. Well, yeah, and, and that's probably why she didn't get re reelected. Well, you know what? We're going to a uh, break right now. We'll come back to our 420 moment and more Christine Kramer. The Vaughn Dank Group offers turnkey solutions for all your cannabis needs, bringing transparency and responsibility to a young budding industry. Helping patients by producing the cleanest, safest, and most potent medicines and infusibles possible. The Von Dank Group is a design, management, and consulting corporation with over 30 years of industry experience and knowledge of the dispensary, edibles, infusible kitchen, and large-scale cultivation of cannabis manufacturing facilities. Let the Von Dank Group help you grow your cannabis business from seed to green. www.vondank.com You're listening to the Nevada Cannabis News Hour, produced by We Can, the wellness education cannabis advocates of Nevada. We Can is a 501c3 nonprofit. If you're interested in sponsoring us, donating, or advertising on this radio show, please contact our advertising department at 702 218 5226 or Kurt, K U R T, at WeCan702.org. Las Vegas Hibfest is here, October 4th, with live performances from 
Burn. Slash, yeah, welcome to the wax room. Wax room. Baby back. I thought she was on a bit of champagne. Cypress Hill send off. Dub C. Marlon Asher. Call me the Ganja Farmer. New Kingston. And a surprise performance from the LBC. Fifty bands, DJs, speakers, and comics. All at the Las Vegas Hemp Fest, October 4th. Get your tickets now at all diversity tattoo and smoke shop locations. And at LasVegasHempFest.com. That's LasVegasHempFest.com. Brought to you by Dr. Reef. Welcome back. Uh, we're going to go ahead and give away a, a pair of HempFest tickets to the fifth caller at 702-731-1230 or toll free at 866-820-5528. So uh, that, that tone indicates it's time for our 420 moment. And today at our 420 moment, we're going to honor uh, the recently passed Joan Rivers. Uh, Joan Rivers has uh, recently passed away, but she is admitted to um, smoking out with Betty White, George Carlin, Woody Allen, and Bill Cosby. In Joan's own words, we had fun. Um, Christine Kramer, How could you, you not have a, with the, that group. Exactly. Christine Kramer, <laughs> you have a Joan story. Oh, I have. I don't really have a good Jones story. I used to work for uh, Las Vegas comedian Steve Rossi, and she used to call him on his phone every few months. And the I was so the first time she called, I thought she was like Frank Marino, one of the drag queens. <laughs> <laughs> and so Joan has had a long career in in. Um, and being crass and kind of uh, haranguing people. But she got a medical marijuana card in 2012 on her on her uh, show, We. And she had to go down to the end of the block or Medicaid in a parked car. Um, and, and then she had to go down to the end of the block because her daughter wouldn't let her get high in the car. Who's the mother here? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Wasn't it in the house? And that's sad. Well, yeah, it is sad. Um, so even though she isn't a major marijuana activist or a donor, at least not publicly, she's willing to go on cameras and discuss her love of uh, medical marijuana and and be filmed inhaling. Um, so that's that's more than you can say about many celebrities. Well, we also, I mean, nursing homes in Israel, uh, right. everyone has access to it, and so that totally should be uh, totally should be allowed. All right, so that is our 420 moment right on Joan Rivers. And we have a winner for the HempFest tickets. Uh, congratulations, Kurt, on your HempFest win. Uh, we'll get the information from you, uh, and uh, we'll get you those tickets. And it's not the Kurt that's in the studio. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. I, I don't need tickets. I'm, I'm speaking at the event, so I, I'm automatically in. And, and our guest here, Christine, is also going to be speaking at the event. Well, what are you going to be speaking about, Christine? It, that that's hard because part of me is like the news is always changing and I'm not one to just have like one set stump speech that if a group is going to have me there speaking I think of something that's timely and relevant and what you want to hear about and I think that what uh, member people coming to HempFest want to hear about is how I will always stand up uh, for uh, legalization of marijuana and for our medical marijuana patients and I'm not going to be just a fair weather friend that we have a lot of legislators right now in our state who have walked away have not been good advocates and it's not until the money got waved around in front of them that they stood up and I have been in my political party getting in on the platform uh, I worked for Dr. Fry uh, for a period of time, uh, helping him get his book published and helping get that message out that I really have to credit Dr. Fry with so much because when I first met him about 10 years ago, I was just like, oh, I really just don't know. But that man can call you and answer every question you might have. And now I'm confident, I go door to door, I talk to a lot of families that they're more negatively impacted by prescription uh, painkiller abuse than marijuana in our community especially here in nevada here in nevada there is there is just an epidemic of uh, pill use and uh, i think that in one recent poll they said something like there's only two million or how many million people in nevada 
and then there is like so many prescriptions that outweigh that outnumber the the number of people and so they i guess the dea deduced from that that there there are huge fraud going on here in nevada for people to obtain uh pain pills yeah, and they've been cracking down on that too a lot of the a lot of the pain doctors have been have been uh actually shut down and and penalized for handing out those prescriptions so speaking of doctors uh we got a call in here uh dr fry hey where you're yes, I, how uh, you doing i want to i'm doing great thank you and i want to confirm christine kramer's support for marijuana at all levels for years she is an ardent activist she is not just a johnny come lately it is in the democratic platform largely because of christine we were at the state meeting up in Reno a couple of months ago, and she said to me, let's go into the 8 o'clock in the morning session. And if we had not, the medical marijuana, excuse me, the legalization of marijuana for all adults would not be in the state Democratic platform. So she is an outstanding candidate. She's exactly what we need in Carson City, and we need to get her elected. She, we, we, you will not have a stronger supporter, more intelligent advocate than Christine Kramer. And I support her 110%, absolutely. Oh, thank you so much. <laughs> You're welcome. I mean, this is, uh, anybody that, that thinks that you have not been involved in this for a long time just doesn't know you because, as you say, you and I have worked together. You assisted me on my campaign, and I thank you very much. And you understand the safety. You understand the medical benefits. You even understand how safe it is recreationally. And this whole parenting thing is ridiculous. I mean, the parents that cause problems to their kids are the ones that are doing alcohol and uh, oxys and roxies and oxys and roxies and alcohol. And when I ask police officers how many times they've ever arrested somebody for marijuana for misbehavior, not for just having marijuana, their answer is never. Every, every time they ever have a marijuana interaction is simply because somebody has it, not because they're doing anything wrong, because they don't. It's incredibly safe, and that's why I have, as a medical doctor, been an activist for so many years because I know how safe it is. There's, there's no drug-drug interactions. There's no problems with it. And this whole Keith Patton thing is a disaster for him and his son. And uh, if we got every alcoholic uh, on marijuana, which is a fabulous treatment for alcoholism, we'd have much less child abuse and much less domestic violence and everything else. So this is real medicine, and it's also a harmless recreational drug, and we're slowly but surely getting there. I just wanted to call in and uh, encourage everybody in District 13 to support Christine to the max. Oh, thank you so much. And I, you know, I just, I can't stay, say enough for what Dr. Fry has done for me that I go knocking door to door in my neighborhood and I don't shy away from my support of the medical marijuana industry and for legalizing hemp. I believe that we need to get this crop going Absolutely. for a You're true green economy. Too. That's and exactly right. And I feel we, like we, we wouldn't, it is my belief, we wouldn't even have the global warming we have now if we had never stopped hemp and had been growing it all over the place and returning oxygen to the environment and taking out CO2. We'd be in much better shape. We may not be uh, perfect, but we'd be in much better shape than we are now without it. So, uh, you know, when we, make, when we make mistakes in this country, we make huge mistakes. Huh. And <laughs> making drugs illegal was a huge mistake. And making hemp illegal is a huge mistake. And slowly but surely, decades later, we're starting to fix things. That's great. Thank you for calling in, Dr. Fry. We pleasure. appreciate your yeah. support. And as a mom, I do get people going, well, wouldn't you don't want your children using marijuana. And I, I don't want my children using alcohol either. I want them to grow up and as adults make choices for themselves. And that I have gone to doors and had people tell me, well, I'm really not for your, your marijuana platform because I've seen lives destroyed by it. We need to separate the legal consequences that people face in our society versus the effects of the drug itself. That, that is true. They've seen lives destroyed by it because police have come in and, and arrested people or children have been taken away from parents simply because of cannabis use or because of or because of recreational use um the thing about you know the the thing about recreational use and even um, medicinal cannabis use is that if you get a drug charge you have to take drug classes that are federally supported and federally backed if you do not pass a drug test 
and and you're positive for marijuana, even though you are a patient, you cannot pass that drug class, and you will not you get your certificate for that drug class, and you will not be able to get those charges off of you, and and your children won't come back to you. So you have to actually completely stop using marijuana, even though you have a prescription or or a recommendation for you to be able to pass that drug class. And and that's just a heinous uh, subject for me. And that's hypocritical when you recall that the federal government prescribes marijuana to several patients. And they're also growing, you know, in Maryland or wherever, and they're requesting to grow even more. So why is it okay for the feds to prescribe it to people and to grow it, yet we, the people, don't have that opportunity under federal law? And that's a great that's a great question, and it just points out more one more hypocrisy within the United States government that that you know that happens, and and that we just allow if we don't stand up and you know and say something about the hypocrisy that we see and vote people out. Vote them out if they are not going to stand up for what you believe in and vote them out. And that's the best way that you can that you can put your money where your mouth is. Well, criminalization has been very profitable and everyone needs to go and look at the campaign finance reports and see which candidates are taking money for uh, from the corporations that want to privatize our prisons. The, the prison privatizers do not want anything to criminalize because it's quite profitable for them to imprison our fellow citizens well that's long been one of my points uh that's long been one of my points uh, about this whole thing that if the cop owns stock in the privatized prison system does that make them an agent for their own for their own profits because then they then they are more apt to arrest you and go to court to make sure that you go to prison because they own stock in that company and and so basically they're just they're just pandering to their to their own pocketbook at that point and as we get further down the path to legalization we need to look back at who's in the prison for things that as of today would not be illegal that yeah uh, that that is a big one too because eddie lepp is in a supermax prison and eddie lepp is a northern california hero that started uh, a co-op and taking care of hundreds of people taking care of hundreds of people up in the clear lake area and he got arrested and then sent to a prison in colorado talk about hypocrisy uh, a supermax prison in colorado the supermax prison is where he put the most dangerous criminals who, who the people that have like killed people and you know and done very heinous crimes um and and this man who's not killed anybody not hurt anybody is in a supermax prison in a state that allows it for recreational use i just find the hypocrisy of that just you and know. we need to make it politically expedient for our governors to offer amnesty Yes, we yeah we do, and you know that, and that's the other thing. What about states that uh, decriminalize? Are they going to let those people out of prison? I mean, what would the, no one the speaks up for prisoners? It, I was told by a political advisor in this community, don't talk about prisoners. It's not a sexy issue, and no one wants to hear about it. But if you've lived long enough, you know someone who's been to prison, and our prison system is cruel. It's unfair, and it's. We have a lot of nonviolent offenders who are in there because those are crimes that pay. They're monetary crimes that pay back into the system, and you can collect a lot of money for them. And we have violent offenders out on the street because there's no money in, uh, imprisoning them. And plus, the nonviolent offenders are probably easier criminals to take care of. That's exactly the point. It's maximizing profits. Yeah. Well, luckily, Iowa, the first in the nation to cast their presidential ba ballots, Governor Terry Branson said that he has not ruled out a proposal to grow and dispense marijuana, and his opponent is uh, supporting of uh, a legis uh, to resolve the legislative stalemate for uh, medical marijuana. Well, that's great. So uh, we're going to be looking to Iowa for more than just our presidential race uh, the coming this fall, right? That's true. And New Hampshire, number two. For the presidential state, marijuana was a clear winner in the primary. Uh, New Hampshire's produced remarkable, positive, remarkably positive results for those who care about reforming the laws. The Senate has been the biggest roadblock facing reformers since the House first approved decriminalization back in 2008. 
This year, with four out of 24 senators retiring, the balance of power finally appears to be tipping in favor of legalization there. And third in the nation is Nevada. So we really need to keep that in mind and have a good, clear voice uh, for all of the campaigns that come to town. We tend to have a lot of attention paid toward the top of the very top of the ticket. But hopefully I I think that in Las Vegas, we're going to have at least three or four uh, strong Democratic candidates here. And I hope to see um, marijuana activists actively engaging. If, if we can get the ball rolling in Iowa and New Hampshire, here here in Nevada, we can certainly take up the cause and really make this an issue for the entire 2016 presidential election rather than just a soundbite on, oh, yes, I'm for medical marijuana. We can really, as activists, get together and make this one of the pinnacle issues, yeah. one of the issues. And of we can our- remember that historically it's because of Richard Nixon that marijuana is still illegal. That yes. He took that up as his own demon weed cause and that President Obama could make drastic changes, but he doesn't have the political will to do that and that we need to elect our next president who will He's well i'm hoping on his, well no I'm, i i hope that obama on his way out uh you know it, it makes it a class two or class three controlled substance and that would go and so far into pushing this nation uh to where it needs to be regarding marijuana and um and hemp growth in america so if we if we got some news out of uh, Wisconsin, yeah, we got a little news out of Wisconsin, my home state. Uh, the police chief there is looking to legalize marijuana and use tax revenue to fund drug treatment. Well, Kurt, weren't what you telling me? Idea. Weren't were you telling me every year on your birthday that there there is a march up to the Capitol and yeah, everybody yeah. smokes marijuana? Yeah, I'm. Uh, I lived in Wisconsin for for 18 years, and I find it kind of strange that the, it's completely illegal in the state because. I remember going to the normal marches every 420 on my birthday up there in Madison at the Capitol building, and it was so open and free. I mean, even even 15 years ago, it felt like uh, like the Cannabis Cup or something going on up there. I mean, p- there were people literally sitting on the state Capitol steps smoking bongs. Really? <laughs> as, the, as the people are walking up to go do their work, all the, the legislators and all that, it's just like, and, and, and it was just, it was, it was common, common thing to do there during that march and they didn't care but it is still technically illegal in the state of wisconsin so um that's funny i never had a problem when i was in with wisconsin scoring no no <laughs> it's, 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 it's <laughs> not it's not in. tough and you go who got the way who got the way and, and everybody's like all right and even though you? even though it is illegal that it's not something that they go after it's 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 they have other fish to fry in wisconsin they don't they don't worry about the little things like that um, Koval, the, the police chief, has called for efforts to enforce laws against marijuana and abject failure. And he said, some, uh, some, uh, said the same about the broader war on drugs. He says, we've done such an abysmal job using marijuana as a centerpiece of drug enforcement that it's time to reorder and triage uh, the necessities of what's more important now. So he said it's time for Wisconsin. Uh, uh, he says referring to the states of Wisconsin, Washington and Colorado, which have legalized a drug for recreational use and sell it uh, at state regulated stores. He says it's time for Wisconsin to consider doing the same. All right. Wow. So free weed and cheese heads. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, as much as much alcohol as they drink in Wisconsin, a little bit of marijuana might, you know. Go might, pack, go. <laughs> might temper that alcoholism, huh? Oh yeah, they're still going to drink a lot, but. I mean, what would we have saved more money on in Las Vegas? Stopping going to the scenes of car accidents or stopping the marijuana raids? That's a great point, Christine. You know that, and, and if they stop the marijuana raids, then they'll save way, way, way more money. But you know, I have to comment about that because it do, it seems like that uh, Metro has left everybody that are operating illegal dispensaries alone. Yeah. There are tons of illegal dispensaries going on right here in Las Vegas, a ton of illegal delivery services that still operate and Metro has left them alone, completely left them alone. And they're uh, they're operating right right under their noses and not not even trying to hide at this point. But, but you know that's that's a 50-50 thing with me because if they start busting these places then people are not going to have the access to their medication that they once had. My 
prediction is that they are going to wait until some of these places start opening and then they're and then the cops are going to come through and sweep everybody that's operating illegally and this is exactly why we need to take it out of the black market because that's where you encourage the violence and the underground activity if we just got it out of the black market because i mean people don't like to see a grow house in their neighborhood uh but if we got to a point where you know we get to our full uh, growing operations, we won't have that concern any longer. And that's true. All right, we're going to go on a break right now and we will come back to, uh, talking more to Christine Kramer, Raymond and Kurt, and of course Beach will be harassing us along. Cannabis has been used as a healing medicine for over 5,000 years with no toxic side effects. Is it right for you? The professionals at Dr. Reefer are here to help. Now accepting new patients, make an appointment today at 428-0000. Bring your medical records, or if you don't have them, their staff will work to document your qualifying condition with a 99% approval rate. If you have any of the following conditions, cancer, AIDS, muscle spasm diseases, severe nausea, severe pain, Crohn's disease, glaucoma, or PTSD, call Dr. Reefer today for your free consultation and their money-back guarantee. If you don't qualify, you don't pay. Call 702-428-0000 to get your Nevada medical marijuana card today. Locally owned and operated TSI Total Safety Incorporated has kept our community safe since 1998. We provide superior services offering professional installation, local fire and burglar alarm monitoring, and the fastest response times in Las Vegas. We also offer armed and unarmed security, video security systems, access control, and fire safety installation and service. All of your security needs are covered. Call us at 702-967-0000 that's 702-967-0000 or visit us at tsivegas.com. Green Spot Hydroponics is a Las Vegas-based distributor of specialty indoor and outdoor gardening supplies. Locally owned and operated with over 3,000 square feet of inventory. Expert and friendly staff to help you with all your growing and hydroponic needs. Our pricing and service will not be beat. We help you grow. 3355 Westlake Mead Boulevard, just behind the Texas station. Mention we can and receive 10% off. Call us at 702-463-6000. That's 702-463-6000. Welcome back, everybody. This is Jennifer Solis at the Nevada Cannabis News Hour. Uh, with me is Kurt Dukach, Raymond Fletcher, and Christine Kramer. Of course, we always have Beach silently in the background. Uh, so twerking. no <laughs> twerking, right? Okay, lurking, so <laughs> I think you said not twerking. Working or twerking? Lurking. lurking. <laughs> okay. Well, it was I, I, if he's twerking back there, I really don't want to turn around. <laughs> I got five on it. <laughs> I got four. Let's get keyed. <laughs> All right. Uh, now we're going to talk about New Mexico and workers' compensation uh, is to cover medical marijuana in New Mexico. Woohoo! We're glad that Mexico, New Mexico is taking the lead on this. Uh, if you have a medical marijuana recommendation by a physician for an injured patient's pain, they must be... It, they must have their medication paid for by their employer and insurer. This is from straight from the New Mexico Court of Appeals. They have ruled on this. Despite marijuana's federal decla- uh, classification as a controlled substance, the court concluded that New Mexico uh, law grants reimbursement for medical marijuana to treat high intensity pain following uh, the following, you know, d- different accidents or spinal injuries caused in the workplace so i can go to new mexico get a job fall down hurt myself and get free weed that's what it sounds like but it's also good news (laughs) for taxpayers because medical marijuana is cheaper than the pharmaceuticals usually prescribed for those and less addictive exactly and that and that's that that is the major concern for a lot of people that get hurt they get hurt they start taking uh, they start taking pills and then suddenly you're addicted um one of the doctors that i worked for for a long time i'm a veterinary medical professional and i worked for a doctor for a long time and she had a foot surgery and i talked to her afterwards and she said you know what i had no idea about how addictive what this was but i took this medication for a month and then at five weeks i started tapering down i got sweats 
I got anxiety. I couldn't sleep. Um, I, I, I had goose flesh, you know, raising on my arms every, every couple of minutes. And she said the anxiety was horrible. And she said, you know, I never, I never, you know, realized how addictive those pills are. And when it comes to an aspect about, I know with uh, workers' compensation, we're often concerned about fraud issues that I think there's more of an incentive to commit fraud and fake an injury longer to get those pills that have a much higher street value than the medical marijuana. Oh, well, yeah. I recently saw something about the di price difference between cocaine and Oxycontin. And that Oxycontin is worth so much more on the street than cocaine is anymore. Yeah, I think Oxycontin is going for probably like like $20 a pill. Is what 20 to $50 a pill. 50 Wow. Yeah, wow. in some of the clubs. And they what, they give you a prescription for what, 30 60 90 Typically of them? Typically 60 to 90 depends on the severity of the pain. I had surgery a couple of years ago and I, I was only allowed four. Four? <laughs> yeah, that's what my health insurance would cover was four. Uh, but it is, I mean, it's a seriously heavy substance that shouldn't be taken lightly. Well, it's, it's synthetic heroin. And that's, uh, that's another reason why we're having such a heroin outbreak across the United States now. And it's an uprising in heroin use is because people are getting addicted to their prescription Oxycontin. And the next thing you know, that's not enough for them. And they have to move on to the heroin because the Oxycontin isn't doing it for them anymore. And they are addicted. Well, and so. it's probably cheaper to get the heroin than the Oxy at that point. Yeah. I don't know. I don't know street mm -hmm. prices of heroin. I've never bought it. <laughs> but you know that that just goes to you know blow away that gateway theory we've heard about for so many years. You know, and the, you know, like we always say, I've I've never been sitting around you know with a bunch of friends smoking cannabis and heard one of them say, "This just isn't doing it for me anymore. Let's go get some heroin." It doesn't happen, you it know. But mother, it, it is happening with prescription medication. I am much more scared of my kids going out somewhere to a party and getting some type of pill than than being exposed to marijuana. Yeah, the, the kind of parties that these kids have nowadays is, you know, you got a bowl, everybody throws in whatever pills they have, and surprise, you a, take whatever you have. A pill party instead of a key party now? Yeah. Well, I, I, no, I've heard it's called, they're called spoolies, those parties. I, I don't, don't know why. I don't know what they're called, but <laughs> they're very dangerous. Exactly. Yeah, and emergency rooms are not fond of them because they don't know if they're going to get a kid in who's taking a max, maximum laxative or a kid uh, that is <laughs> taking a, a neuroreceptor. Yeah, so turbo lax would be a lot better, but st still, you're right. Um, they have no idea about the pills that they're taking, and, and they could be statins. They could be just, you know, re really weird stuff, and that and that's just one of the weird things to me. Why are you going to take a bunch of pills you don't even know what they are and pour them in a bowl and then, like, choose? Because they're kids. Look at the stupid stuff you did as a kid. I mean, you know. I never did crap like that. I, I yeah. we never ne did. The yeah. closest I came is we poured a whole bunch of different alcohols together and drank that, and it was usually pretty disgusting. We we called it wapatui because that's what you felt like doing mm -hmm. after you. Either that or vomit <laughs> recipe. <laughs> Yes, in, in, in seriousness, though, these kids don't even know what kind of pills they're taking when they go into the emergency room. So they cannot even answer medical professionals. Yeah, and what you they can't took. treat them responsibly if you don't know what, what the cause is either. Yeah, uh, at no. the ER, they've got a poster on the wall with all these pictures of pills, and the kids are supposed to like point to, what did you take? It's like they don't know. I mean, sometimes these kids are taking like a whole handful of a bunch of stuff. And so would you rather have a, a lot more of these different pills available to our kids or you know i don't encourage my children to use marijuana i uh, but i think that most of us would agree that our kids being exposed to that is a lot safer just remember cannabis is a gateway drug so the government <laughs> a, keeps telling gate, us gateway to a good time that's about it <laughs> that's funny <laughs> So we have coming up uh, a lot of different things that are going on, a lot of events that, that are on the 18th and the 23rd. On the 18th, we not only have that public Clark, Clark County meeting, but we have uh, Keith Patton uh, in, in court. On the 23rd, we have Clark County meeting, a city meeting at the same time. Don't these guys coordinate or they do, do they do this on purpose, do you think? I think they do it purposely. Christine? I think that every um, organization and government is just involved so much in just what they're doing that they're not looking at the other calendars or the other departments. We also have uh, uh, Las Vegas Medical Marijuana Association 
was having a meeting with Dr. Sue Sicily. And she's very important in the movement. She is one of the first researchers that got um, that got the okay and the approval to to uh, study PTSD in a university setting. And she got government approval to do this. And so if you're not at one of these Clark County or city or stakeholders meetings for the state, um, please uh, uh, plan to attend the Las Vegas Medical Marijuana Association's meeting on the 23rd. Uh, yeah, they where is that going They on? hold those at the Lowry's Prime Rib over on Flamingo. Okay. And it starts at 1130. And it is $40 to get in. And you get your lunch with that. They usually have a choice of, you know, steak, prime rib, chicken, shrimp, something like that. Um, they're they're very good for networking. And there's some... some there's some great speakers. Yeah, Nevada great speakers State there. Treasurer Kate Marshall will be there. Uh, helping the banking system in Nevada work with medical marijuana businesses. And a special guest legislator. Well, that you know, I talked to Kate Marshall uh, back in 2009 or 2010 about her stance on the medical marijuana, and she was very positive. She was very um, that she was very pro medical. Um, you know, we'd already had it in the state, so she you know couldn't say she was against it. I talked to her about dispensaries back then, and she said that she thought it would be a good income for the state. And so she's been a long time supporter um, of medical marijuana. It's been a great income for the state, and we haven't even opened one yet. They had brought in what was it, two point six million dollars just on the application fees, and that's not even counting the the money that the municipalities brought in. That's just the state application fee. So, and that's just the tip of the iceberg. Oh, the smell! <laughs> <laughs> and then there's a, a picnic in the park on. Oh, this Saturday. Saturday. Yeah, that's right. This Saturday, uh, Las Vegas Normal is hosting their, their very first potluck picnic at Sunset Park. Uh, the event starts at 3 o'clock. It's an all-ages, fa family-friendly event. Um, this picnic is really to bring awareness and to, you know, to bring cannabis out of the shadows. This is, we want, we want families there. We want, you know, kids there. There's no reason to, to you know, to, to, you know, to have your kids afraid of this, especially being used as medicine, like the normal people are. This is something that, you know, as I've said before, we don't want to lead our kids through fear. We want to, we want to lead them through education. So, you know, bring your kids out, have some fun, enjoy, you know, enjoy some, meet some great people and come out and avoid and support Las Vegas normal. Well, and they ask that you don't medicate at the park. This is a public event. Um, we're just coming out to support them. It's well, also Lady Rako's birthday, and she is a longtime activist and supporter of We Can. And so we'd like to say happy birthday to uh, Lady Rako. Happy birthday, Saturday. lady. <laughs> happy birthday, Rako. Hey. Yeah, I'm pretty sure she'll probably bring her you can sing a song or two for us too yeah and she's great on the ukulele and so we will see uh everybody at the picnic at the normal picnic on saturday if we don't see you at the at um keith Patton's court date on the 18th remember dress dress professionally no no shout shout out to my homie keith yeah don't no wear, shout outs <laughs> yeah don't wear the big pot leaf t-shirt into court please you know where you know at least wear you know a polo or you know a blank t-shirt decent and then uh hemp fest is coming up october october 4th. 4th and then we have our pool party on the 28th on the 28th it's our last pool party of the season so come out and represent we will have uh cannabis models there and there is going to be a photo shoot going on so historically this has always been kind of a weenie roast um i'm hoping that there will be more ladies in the house with this photo shoot and yep. and so guys come on out we always have a lot of guys that are smokers which is good for me but you know you know now the ladies are going to be out we got some great 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 raffle prizes so come on out and have some fun with us and we'll be back next week so tune in klav am 12 30 4 p.m tuesdays so shout out to christine kramer thank you for joining us christine thank you all right be safe out there everybody